I'm going to talk about um, systematic literature review. So, this is the outline. So, uh, we're going to talk about um, five issues. The first one is to try and define what systematic literature review is all about. And also, I'll give information about the rationale. And then also provide the purpose of systematic review and also research question that you have to think about if you want to do a systematic literature review. And lastly, the process, the step-by-step -step process from the time that you have to decide the kind of literature that you have to um, select and the time that you have to analyze and then think about presenting your findings. So systematic literature review, you know, the name systematic means that you have to be methodological in the process. So this means that you have, you have, you know, thought through the process of um, selecting a specific literature. And then after selection, you have to think about uh, reviewing them by going through the what has been written in the literature and trying to identify significant information that will help you to address the research question that you have right systematic because you also have to think about documenting the process so that people or future researchers can do the same thing and have similar findings so that's just the main thing concerning it's a very extensive process you have to think and try to plan very well. You have to think about where to assess that information or the literature. You have to think about the specific information that you need um, to help you to address your research question. And also, also try to learn things about analyzing, you know, data analysis. Systematic literature review, you know, um, there's, there's the similarities between um, traditional research and systematic literature review. For traditional research, most of the time you focus on participant. And this a systematic review, a systematic uh, literature review focus on literature. So the same school that you have developed in, looking for participant, selecting them, making sure that they meet a specific requirement or conditions, that's kind of same skills that you're going to use when you're thinking about using, um, doing a systematic literature review. So, as I said, I said, you know, just also think about the fact that you are doing research, right? The traditional research. When you're doing traditional research, you know, before you think about what you want to focus on, or before you think about the purpose and the research question, you have to find the problem. How do you find a problem? You have to go back into the literature, right? To find out what has been done and based on that, you'll be able to um, identify a gap in the literature, which is the research problem that you want to address. So the same way, the fact that you are doing literature review doesn't mean that you are not going to do ordinary or traditional literature review. Normally you start with the traditional literature review the same way that you have to go look for, um, based on the topic, you look around and find out what has been done and try to review, and then based on that, you'll be able to identify a gap. Right, so you're going to do the traditional one before you think about doing the systematic literature review. The, the essence of the traditional one is to help you to make sure that you have, you have identified a gap in the literature. Without identifying a gap, without identifying a problem, there's no need for you to do research, right? So these are some examples of the gap that you have to think about. So you do ordinary literature review, go through the literature, what is going on, right? Sometimes based on the topic, you'll find out that there has been research done on a specific topic that they use m multiple methodologies, right? So um, let's say you are focusing on burnout among a group of people in a workplace, right? And then you look into research that has been done about burnout and you realize that um, there have been qualitative research, quantitative research, mixed method, and then they arrive at a specific finding. So you want to investigate and find out 
the connection between the different methodologies and also the findings. Why the findings are the same? Why are they different? Can you explain the differences and similarities based on the methodology that they use, right? So then if that is the case, then you can use systematic literature review. Yeah, there have been a lot of research done in a on a topic with different methodologies and you want to investigate and find out uh, whether there's similarities and difference between the findings considering the different methodologies that they use. Sometimes as you are reviewing literature, you realize that there's a contradiction in terms of the findings. You can do systematic literature review to try to explain or find out why there is a contradictory um, findings, right? Also, another problem that you have to think about is sometimes there has been a lot of research on a specific topic and you have realized that there's no researcher or few researchers have done comprehensive literature review concerning that topic. You can use it as a way, a gap, right? And then go ahead to justify your actions that, okay, I want to do systematic literature review because concerning the topic, there has been a lot of research, but no researcher has tried to bring all the studies together and compare and contrast and see the trend. So you want to do a comprehensive or systematic literature review. Sometimes you also want to look at existing studies so that you can develop a theory or a model, right? You can use systematic literature. Last one is, let's say you want to look at the best practices um, concerning teaching, right? And there has been a lot of research on that. So you can do a comprehensive literature review by trying to bring all the best practices and try to find out the similarities and come up with a unified best practices that could be useful for practitioners, right? So these are examples of gaps that you can uh, identify before you can decide that uh, comprehensive literature review or systematic literature review is appropriate. So without identifying a problem that are related to um, what I've talked about, there's no need for doing a comprehensive literature review. So this means that you are not doing comprehensive literature review because you have to do it. You have to give a rationale. Why are you doing a comprehensive literature review? Let me give you an example where you shouldn't do a comprehensive literature review. If there is a topic where there's little research that has been done concerning a the topic, then what are you reviewing? There's no need for you to do a comprehensive literature review because there's no literature or little like five literature talking about a topic. Right? So you always have to think about the reason why you think this approach will be the best for you concerning your study. And um, somebody might ask, okay, so what is the difference between the traditional literature review and the systematic literature review? I think I've already defined that. But for the traditional literature review, the ordinary literature review, your purpose is to educate yourself and your audience or your readers. You also want to inform them about the topic, let them know more about it. You can also use literature to defend why you want to conduct a specific research. So these are the main kind of rationale behind doing a traditional literature review. It's very different from the systematic literature review. So after identifying the problem, then you move to the purpose of the study. The same thing as you are doing a traditional research, where you identify a gap in the literature, you talk about a research problem, and then you talk about, based on the problem, what, what do you want to do in the study? What is the purpose of your study, right? So you have to make sure that the problem that you have identified is consistent with what you want to find out or what you want to do in the study. So these are this table just gives you information about, okay, Let's say you are find out that there's a lot of uh, methodology used to uh, study a specific topic, right? So you can do comprehensive literature review by uh, reviewing findings and just find out how the uh, findings and then how it's connected to the methodology, the differences, and then you can come up with a shared kind of findings. So based on methodology A, B, and C, 
based on qualitative research, quantitative research, mixed method research concerning a specific topic. What do they what do they have in common concerning their findings? You can do a comprehensive literature review or systematic literature review for you to um, arrive at the um, the shared findings or maybe contradictory findings. So the second one is in terms of um, in case you have identified the fact that the findings are contradictory, what do you have to do about it? You can do systematic literature review trying to examine those um, the why there are differences and trying to bring out you know the reason why you know people want to know why um, are they finding different so you have to investigate and find out right and then report that information to your audience and the next one is you know when there's no studies concerning uh, systematic literature review uh, in relation to the topic that you are interested in but there have been a lot of research on that topic so you can just do that and then report that information to your audience. Then, you know, if you want to do develop methodology, uh, theory or model, um, the purpose of your systematic literature review is to develop a model or a theory. The same thing as the pe best practices, right? So the, uh, the, the learning, the um, lesson here is that always make sure that the problem that you have identified is consistent with the purpose of your review. So, what about the research question? So, after writing about the purpose, you have to think about the research question. And I just want to, want to emphasize that the systematic literature review I'm presenting now is more of a qualitative right because there are two main types of systematic literature review we have the quantitative portion and the qualitative portion my presentation will be based on the qualitative portion the quantitative portion is the one where you only focus on qualitative uh, quantitative findings and look at the effect sizes right and then trying to bring all the effect sizes together and bring overall effect size one example is that, let's say you want to find out effect of gender on anxiety, right? And you collect a lot of quantitative study that try to bring out a connection between the gender and anxiety. So each of them might provide you effect size. Effect size is um, the, um, the strength of the relationship between the two variables that you are looking at, right? So based on that, the strength might be different based on the study that you are looking at. So you're going to bring all the strength together and try to find the average and get overall effect size. This is more of meta-analysis or we call it a quantitative uh, literature review. What I'm focusing on is a qualitative portion, right, where you um, analyze your literature like you are doing a qualitative study or qualitative analysis. So most uh, the questions here is more of a qualitative research question. And there are two main types of qualitative research question. We have the descriptive, uh, descriptive qualitative research question, which is uh, most, most of the time it starts with what? What are the factors contributing to burnout, right? So you go through the literature and just pick up all the factors, right? So you are just describing, you are not interpreting anything, just looking for the factors based on the findings in the literature and then bring them and then talk about them. And we have exploratory or uh, explanatory um, quant qualitative research question, which is more, it starts it start with how, right? Because in more of trying to explain something, explore something. So as you can see here, how does experiencing work overload contribute to burnout at the workplace among health workers, right? So after deciding concerning your research question, then you move on to the process, right? This is where you start looking for literature, right? So there are three main steps in looking for literature for you to analyze and present your findings. The first one is searching for literature, right? Um, second one is selecting relevant literature. The third one will be the 
um, analyzing um, selected literature. Okay, so let's start with the searching for literature. I think there are very important things that you have to note. There are four things that you have to know in terms of searching for literature. You have to familiarize yourself with the, the types of searching, and I'm going to talk about the types. And second one, you have to determine the kind of literature that you want to select and also the source of literature. And the third one will be um, you have to come up with a criteria or condition the literature has to meet before, um, to, before they are extracted to be part of the selection process or the analysis process. And the last one will be the deciding the you know the kinds of words that you have to use. Most of the time, determine the criteria will help you to decide the kinds of words, keywords that you have to use to search to extract the literature, right, or the syntax. So the syntax is more of the combination of words and using. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about the syntax well, as we go on. So there are three main um, types of searching, right? The popular one is the electronic database searching. And this is all about, um, you know, you know is, is, is most of the literature are online, in, they are in the cloud, right? When you go to your school library website, you can, you know, there's a, a search engine there where you can search for literature. Uh, based on the topic that you are interested in, right? So um, you just based on the terms that you want to. So if let's say you are looking for literature that related to burnout, you just type burnout, and then maybe among health workers, and then you can type you can type burnout health workers, and then you can see what you're going to get. So most of the literature you're going to get. You're going to use this kind of, you know, this type, right? Where you look, um, use a search engine uh, to search for that information. The last two is all more about a manual way of getting access to literature. The first one will be the backward searching. This means that let's say you first search for literature and you came up with a few of them, right? then you can take some of them that are promising right and look at the reference list and based on the information of the references that will help you to go for um search for other literature right so think about this like a snowball sampling you know the traditional snowball sampling is where you identify a participant you interview the person and you ask the person Oh, do you know anybody that, you know, qualify to be part of this study that, you know, have the same kind of characteristics like you? Oh, yes, I know a person. And, then, you know, they can also inform the person and then you can also interview them. So this one, you select some of the uh, art, promising articles or literature. You look at the reference list and then that will also um, take you to you know, look for other literature that will be useful, right? So that will be the backward searching. The forward searching is um, where you um, look for articles that have cited the main article that you are looking at. So you look at a promising article, you search and then find out uh, what are the articles that have cited this article, right? Most of the time, you can use Google to do that. So let me give you, let, let me uh, see what I can find an example for you. Okay, yes. So let's say we are interested, we, we like this article, right? We want to know um, the uh, number of articles or so find out the articles that have cited this one, right? So we copy the, the title of the article we go to Google, uh, search. So we can just paste that and then search for it. So when you search, you can see that uh, for this article, 48 
articles or literature has cited this article and then you click on this one and it will take you to the places uh, the, the, where the articles are. So some of them, they are in PDF and they, are, um, they might be free. Uh, you don't have to log on. You just click on it and you get access to that information. So you can see that I've already gotten access to another article here. And then I find out whether this one meets the needs or meet the requirement of my article. So it's, this is also another manual way of searching for literature. And it's um, it's called it's, it's a systematic literature review. Uh, this means that you have to document the process, right? You have to make sure that you are documenting how you assess or selected your article. So in this case, you can say that um, you first did the, um, use the database, selected some of the articles, look at the references. And that will, you know, took you to some of the articles. Or you search for um, articles that have cited the main article that you are looking at, right? So you always have to document a process so that people will believe what you found, and also to help future research to follow the steps that you have, you are providing. So the next one will be the. Um, Determine the kind of data that you want to, uh, or the kinds of um, literature, right? So maybe you can decide that, okay, for this, my study, I'm only going to focus on articles, right? Or you can say that, okay, let me focus on articles and books, or maybe gray literature, right? The gray literature will be, can be white paper, corporate report, dissertation, newspapers, uh, and also program evaluation report. These are the examples of gray literature, right? So you just have to decide based on your initial kind of search, um, where can you get access to your, uh, get access to the rich information or rich data for you to, to use it to analyze and address your research question, right? So, after you have decided the kind of data or the kind of literature you have to think about the source and these are just examples of the sources um, I don't know what your library provide um, so you can check your um, what access you have to the library uh, but I also have a list of places that you can get um, literature or articles for free so um, when you get access to this presentation, you can just click on them and then you can, you'll can you be able to access articles. Um, most of them here are for free, except maybe the first and the third one that might not be free. But I think when you look into this, you'll be able to get some um, access, uh, you can access articles for free. All right. So what next? You have to think about, okay, Based on my topic, what conditions should my the article meet for them to be extracted or selected initially, right? Before you you know you go through all of them and try to select the ones that you want to use for the analysis. So in terms of the subject matter, this is where we talk about okay, any article should focus on this topic. The example that I'm using is burnout. So I can say that any article that I'm going to select should talk about, it should be about burnout, right? And in terms of discipline, you can say that, okay, I want in all the research that has been done within maybe social science discipline or any discipline that I, you know, any discipline, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's social science or um medicine or any kind of um field right the most important thing is they are talking about burnout and in terms of participant you can say that okay i think i want articles that talks about burnout among maybe doctors or burnout among maybe um health workers or social workers right um so you know you can decide and also the location you can say that okay 
I only want to want to know find research that has been done in only in Jamaica, or I want to find research that has been done only in the U.S. Or it doesn't matter the location. I just if the research is about burnout and it's about maybe doctors, I'll select that information. And also the year of publication, you kind of decide. Okay, I want only research that has been published for the past ten years. Right, uh, within the ten years um, duration, right. Or you can say that okay, it doesn't matter the year. I just you know if it talks about my topic and it's within uh, and also focus on this population. You know that's all that I want. So you have to think through and decide, right, so that it will inform the next stage where you have to decide the kinds of words you have to use to search. So knowing that your criteria will help you to know that, okay, so in order to, so if I, my subject matter is burnout, so this means that I can search the word burnout, right? And maybe burnout in the workplace, okay. So my section will be maybe burnout and workplace or burnout only. So uh, you can say that an article, I will select an article if it's, talks about burnout, workplace, uh, maybe workload, right? So you have to decide. But the decision should be based on the criteria that you have set for yourself. Um, so if you want to make the searching process a little bit complex, right? This is where you use search syntax. So this is all about is that combination of keywords, right? So you can say burnout and workplace. So this means that any um, you are telling the system that um, select only article that talks about burnout and workplace. If it talks only about burnout, don't select it. Any article should talk about both. But the second option. All means that an article, the system should select an article that talks about either workload or exhaustion, right? And the last one that is a little complex is you are telling the system if an article uh, mention burnout and workplace, you can select it, um, but it doesn't have to talk about depression right so this so the link here will give you more information about you know some of this the the, the basic one but they are the complex and now um terms or syntax that you have to learn um so this is the one of the things that you know you have to you know just familiarize yourself as you search for literature so let me select the general one and I click on continue. Okay, so you see here, um, I can just bring Ben out here, and it has already an end is already there. So, I, so I just bring the workplace. So I'm just telling the system that um, any articles or literature that has both burnout and workplace should be selected or should be extracted and you click on OK uh, search so this is what we found you're gonna get a lot of lists so you can see burnout workplace right so sometimes it is right on the like the title right sometimes you have to review the uh, the abstract to know whether it has captured the two concepts um, so that's how you have to, you know, you see that it's, it's a lot of data. So this is where you can decide, okay, maybe I have to think about doing the advanced search where I have to decide the number of, uh, like the duration in terms of the year of publication. So you can decide the year of publication, um, the duration, whether you want it within 10 years or maybe five years, you can do that. So that's this one way of, you know, searching for information. Uh, you can do the complex one that I was talking about, not 
um, let me see, depression, and then you search for that. So you are telling the system that if it, it includes depression, you should not. Um, it shouldn't be part of the selection or it shouldn't be part of the article that the system will extract. So that's how you have to think, um, do it, right? So this is just an example. And if you are interested, you sometimes have to click on it and see um, the content, uh, the abstract. So you can see that the abstract talks about burnout. Um, it talks about workplace, so this could be, be part of your initial kind of you know selection concerning the article. Um, and let's say, and also let's say if you want to focus on what the one that the uh, specific participant like nurses, you can include that in the search so that um, the system will pull out that information to you. So this is just um, an example of how to pull the information. And then after pulling, you can export that information. Yeah, I don't know whether you have access to some a software that can help you to document all of your search. Uh, for us, we have access to uh, I think rough uh, rough works or something like that. I have to check. Oh, okay, so. Rough work, so we have access to that. So, um, depending on your school, which um, kind of information that, but this one is also free. Zotero is free, so you can also um, set up an account online so that when you are interested in the article, you just click on this one and then export that information. Right. Okay, so then let me move on to the next one. Okay, so let's assume that you have, you know, search for information. Maybe you have you have found about maybe hundred or two hundred articles or literature. What do you do about it? This is where you think about a selection stage, right? The selection stage where this is where you come up with selection criteria is very different from the criteria that we did the other one. The other one or well, the essence of you for this one is to help to inform the kinds of words that you have to use to search. Right. So after searching, you're going to have a lot of articles. So this means that you have to go to each of the article and decide. Hmm, should I pick this one for the analysis? Oh no, I don't think this one, I should pick this one. But you don't know want to do that in um, not a systematic way. You have to have specific conditions that an article has to meet for you to select for the analysis. Right. This is where you decide. Okay, so for each article, maybe you can decide concerning the purpose or the problem. If an article, the problem of the article focus on maybe this aspect of burnout, then I'll select. Or you don't have to worry about the problem of the study, right? You can also think about, okay, I think if the purpose of the study is about maybe examining burnout among this population, I'll pick that, I'll select that article. So you have to decide the kind of conditions that the, an article has to meet for you to select, right? So the section will give you a lot of articles, but you, because of time and resources, you cannot analyze all the articles, about 100 or 200 or 300 articles. So you have to select few to do the analysis. It doesn't, um, the number doesn't really matter. The most important thing is that the information or the article is relevant concerning the topic or the, what you want to do in the study. So, uh, based on what I've read, some of, and I, I have a list of examples of articles, um, 
uh, studies that are that this uh, systematic review, you can look at it. I can see that the number of articles were in between um, 10, 15 to 25, sometimes it's 35 articles that they use, right? So this, this it, to me, it means that there is not, that we don't have a formula to determine the number of articles, but just make sure that you are selecting relevant articles for your study. It's just the same thing as doing a qualitative study. People are going to ask, how many participants should I use for the qualitative study? It depends, right? Some people do a qualitative study with one participant. Some do a qualitative study with 20 participants. Are you going to say that the person who did one participant finding is, is, uh, uh, is, not, is less um, better than the person who used a lot of participants? When it comes to qualitative study, it's not about the participant. It's about the richness of the information you are getting from participants. Right. So think about this way. What kind of information do I need to help me to address my research question? Can you defend your five articles that you selected for your analysis? People are going to ask you, why didn't you select about 20? Why five? Oh, I selected five because those are the articles that met the condition that I set for myself. Sometimes you have to adjust the condition a little bit so that you can get additional articles so that you'll be able to get rich information to address your research question. Right. So um, for a study, if you want to go for a range, think about maybe 10, 15 to 20 is good, right? Uh, and I, I think when you read these articles, you know what I'm talking about that, you know, they give uh, some of them did 25, some of them did 15, you know, so it all depends on the, on, on the availability of the relevant articles. It also depends on the topic and depends on the condition that you want the article to meet for you to select, for, for the article to be part of your study. So if the condition is so strict, then you may end up getting one article. <laughs> Imagine that you just want to say that, okay, I want an article that focuses on burnout um, among health workers in only Jamaica, no other place, only Jamaica. And the article should be published, uh, should have been published within five years you end up having maybe two or three or less, right? So try as much as possible not to make a condition so strict that you will limit rich information that you want to get from other, um, if you make it a little bit broader, right? So I, I think you have to be just, you know, the, the, the lesson here, you just have to be flexible, right? And, and I think the articles that I, I've showed you also will give you an idea about, you know, the kind of condition that you can set up for yourself for you to be able to select relevant articles for you to do the analysis. Most of the time, what I've seen is that um, some people decide that, okay, I'm only going to focus on qualitative study, uh, uh, study on and the topic that I'm focusing on, right? And I'm going to focus, focus on this group of participants from this location. But sometimes they take out the location because if you are limited to location, you may not have a lot of articles for you to review, right? So the lesson here is that be flexible and make sure that um, you are, your condition will help you to select Mm, sufficient articles for you to use for the analysis. Okay, so after you have decided the condition, you have to think about, okay, um, where, sh where am I going to look to decide which article qualify? You may decide that, okay, I want to only look at the title and the abstract. 
I think that I can see that um, my initial review, uh, initial extraction of articles, which is the section of articles, we came up with maybe 400 articles. You cannot go through all the 400 articles. So one thing that you can do is that, okay, if the title and the abstract talks about maybe burnout, nurses, and maybe depression or something like that, I will select that to be part of my study. Right. So you only look at the abstract and then also the, uh, um, the title. In some situations, you may think that, oh, I think based on the abstract and also the title, mm -hmm. the article looks promising. But you don't know whether you want, to be, you want it to be part of the analysis or not. This is where you, you go further and say, okay, let me look at the introduction, what you are saying. Mm, let me go and look at the body and see. Let me look at the conclusion. Can that help me to decide whether this article qualifies? So this, you know, sometimes you just have to first make a decision and then as you go on, you think about, okay, should I adjust the my decision, initial decision so that I'll be able to um, select rich articles for me to use for the analysis. Right. So let's assume that you went through everything you have identified, maybe 20 articles, right? So what next? The next one is to analyze, right? The same way that you, if you are doing a traditional research, you select participants, maybe interview them, and you have, your, you have their transcript. The last step is to analyze the transcript. So now you have 20 articles, you just have to analyze. And I will talk about two different types of analysis that you could do. Right. And also I talk, you know, talk a little bit about software because doing it manually without a software is going to be tough. Um, so um, you have to maybe think about um, using a software to do the analysis, um, help you with the organization of the um, code that you develop. So there are two main types of qualitative analysis. We have content analysis and thematic analysis. So the content analysis is where you first develop codes or themes, and then you go through the literature and then use, connect the themes or the codes to the significant information that you see, that you have identified in the literature. Right. One example is that you see the first the example that I give about the research question. What are the factors, right? Maybe based on your initial analysis of the literature, you have identified about six factors, right, that contribute to burnout. So that those six factors will be the themes. Then you go through the transcript or you go through the literature and identify those connect the factors that you have gotten um, to the one that you have already um, developed. Am I making sense? So content analysis is all about first coming up with teams before you go through your transcript or you go through your literature to identify significant information that you think will help you to address the research question and connect those significant information to the themes that you have already developed. Normally you do use content analysis when you, are, you have a descriptive research question. It's, it's like a straightforward. What are the contribution of this? What are the effects of this? What are the impact of that? So you are looking for that information, right? There without making an interpretation right of what is there you just look for it you don't have to interpret the finding to know maybe the factors they are there so you, t you take the factors and then connect it to the themes that you have mm -hmm. 
thematic analysis is um, going through the transcript or going through the literature, right? And then identifying significant information and then developing quotes or themes that represent the significant information. So that's the, that's the difference. The difference is that for con content analysis, you already develop, especially sometimes you already have like a conceptual framework, right? Or a specific theory. Based on the theory, you come up with themes or quotes, and then you go through the data that you have, the register literature, and identify significant information and connect to the, the themes or the quotes that you have come up, come up with. Co thematic analysis, you don't develop any theme first. You first go through the transcript or the uh, literature, identify significant information that you think might address the research question that you have, and assign labels to them. Those labels will be the quotes or the themes. And I have resources here. I did a lot of presentation. I think I did a presentation on cont content analysis and also thematic analysis. So when you click on this one, you'll be able to get access to that information. In terms of a software, there's a free software called QDA Minor Light. Um, where you can, you know you can use it to analyze your data, so you can import all the articles that you have selected, and then do the analysis, right? So um, the software doesn't do the analysis for you, but it helps you to organize the quotes that you develop or the themes that you come up with. And I have a presentation on how to use it here, yeah, so you can click on it and get more information. Another one that looks promising, I haven't used it before, but based on the video that I saw, you can use it and you'll be able to you know, upload um, your transcript or your literature and do the analysis. So I think these resources will be helpful for you in case you want to use this one. Tag, is it target or something like that? So what is the take home message? So these are the things that you have to think about when you want to do comprehensive or um, um, systematic literature review. Think about a problem that you want to address. Without a problem, there will not be any research. So what problem do you want to address? You, have, you may have a topic. You have to look into the literature and see what has been done and trying to see whether it warrants you to uh, do a systematic review. As I said, there are some problems that you cannot do systematic review, especially when you realize that there's less research that has been done concerning the topic. If there's less research, what are you going to review? There's nothing to review. So always think about, um, based on examples that I've given concerning the gaps, Think about that and see whether you can use um, systematic literature review. You have to think about the purpose. You have to think about the research question that you want to address. The research question drives the process, especially when it comes to the, anal uh, the analysis part. You have to think about, okay, so when you have selected articles, which part of the article should I look for the significant information? Should I look for... Um, should I focus on only the presentation of the findings concerning the articles for me to um, address my research question that I have? Should I look about uh, uh, concerning the discussion section for me to analyze or code to address the research question that I have? So the research question will drive where, which part of the article to look for information. And you also have to think about the type of literature. Are you going to focus on books? Are you going to focus on articles? Are you going to focus on gray literature, dissertation, reports? What about, what about initial conditions that needs to um, an article or a literature needs to meet for you to select? What such strategies are you going to use? In terms of searching 
for literature? What is your plan? After searching and gotten about a lot of data, a lot of articles, what next? What criteria are you going to use to make sure that you select rich articles for you to use for the analysis? How are you going to analyze your data? And in terms of presentation of the findings, how are you going to present your findings? In terms of presentation of findings, you have to think about all the... That's why I initially said that you have to document the process. It increases the credibility of your findings if you document the process and show to your audience, show to your research, um, uh, research community how you got access to the articles, what criteria did you use, what um, after searching for the articles, how many uh, literature do you, did you find initially. So after that, what did you do next? And that's what, where these articles come in, where you know, they have best practices and you can learn from what they did and you can you know, cite the source and then try to um, learn from what they have provided to, for us. So these are my references, and then this is my book. It's about qualitative analysis. Um, it provides step by step um, how to analyze the data. It also use um, it uses existing data to demonstrate how to go through the process of you know identify significant information, coming up with themes finding out the connection between the themes and also presenting your findings. Um, so that's what I have for you.